Come on, Henrik! Here he goes! Speed suit on! Oh, right, he's coming back! Come on, Henrik! Oh my god! Come on, Henrik! Ah. Ah. I don't know who won. Who did they give it to? Did you get piped? Pip piped! <laughs> Yeah, baby, you got piped. You got piped. <laughs> oh, they're going to the Masters. Oh, Henry Brisson, 13 16. Insane. That's absolutely insane. What a race. Uh, with that finish. Ah, uh, he's amazing. I think he is so fit. Of course he's fit. He just ran 13 17. That, that's what I meant, yeah. What do you, what, what do you, what do you mean? You, like, he does double session days. Oh, I bet you couldn't do a double session day. You could not train like an Ingebrigtsen. I'll show her. So I'm ready to train like the Ingebrigtsens. So today I'm doing a double threshold session. I'm starting down the lake this morning with five times six minutes at between two and four millimoles of lactate, which is just below my anaerobic threshold. Um, I'm gonna take lactate readings after, well, in the middle and at the end of the session to see if I've gauged it right. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've done this session before a few times and the key is to do it controlled so you don't tip over that anaerobic threshold and fill your body with lactate. It's a lovely morning down the lake. The Ingebrigtsens often do their sessions around the lake in Norway. Uh, you can see that on the Team Ingebrigtsen show, which is amazing. If you haven't watched that, I would highly recommend it. And you can find that on YouTube with subtitles if you're English speaking or Norwegian if you're Norwegian speaking. Um, and if you're any other country speaking, I don't know what you're going to do. One of the reasons that the Ingebrigtsens really try to control their sessions is so they can get a lot of volume of anaerobic threshold work in without overstressing their body, without overtraining, so they can keep that consistency by getting a high amount of volume done. They'll do two anaerobic threshold sessions a day and then they'll take the next day very, very easy. So they take their recovery really seriously and they take their training very seriously, as you can tell by the incredible results by Jakob, Philip, and obviously Henrik. Right, let's uh, let's get going. If you followed along with the Ingebrigtsen's journey, you know they're all about the speed suit on. Um, but I'm not going to do my training in this. They train in normal uh, shorts and t-shirt or singlet, and uh, they get their speed suit on for their races. So I'm going to change back out of this costume because I look a bit ridiculous in a speed suit around the lake doing my session. Uh, but yeah, let's get on with it. So it's warming up, two mile warm up, and then um, I'll take my lactate to see what it is. Should be really low. <laughs> but uh, I've had some interesting reading from the lactate monitor before, so hopefully it's reliable today. And what I, what I mean by interesting is, I've been at home doing no exercise, and then I'll get a massive like 3.4 lactate minimal score, when it should be about one at home. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully, I think I've mastered the technique now, so we'll see today. So we're looking for a low score between one and two uh, to start and then I'll measure after three reps and after six reps and hopefully 
I gauge it right and we don't go over four. What the Ingebrigtsens do is they do their morning session below anaerobic threshold, six minutes or two k's for them. And then their evening session, they do a bit quicker, but with the extra recoveries, shorter reps, three minutes, one minute recovery, means they can do them a bit faster and still stay below their anaerobic threshold. The absolute key to all of this is to really control the session and not go over the top. Yet, who is the Britain coach and dad, is so strict with it. I've seen him before shouting at them when they've done too hard on an interval. He gets really angry. Um, he just doesn't want them overtraining. He doesn't want them building up too much lactate. And uh, he thinks the key, I say he thinks it's working. The key is to really, really gauge that intensity which is why they use lactate monitors. They don't use them for every session because they know their heart rates now. And I know my heart rate, so hopefully I'll gauge it right too. Got my vapor flies on today. I've seen plenty of videos with the Ingebrigts in training and vapor flies. So that feels pretty authentic. Around the lake, not quite Norway, but Lydney Lake is pretty infamous. Here we go, my lactate testing kit. Same one as the Ingebrigtsens use. There we go, Lactate Pro 2. They used to use the one, and now they use the two. Who would have thought? So we've got an alcohol wipe for the finger. We've got the strip, which you've got to be really delicate with and careful not to touch the ends. Stick that in there. I don't know what you call this. I think it gets the blood, that's what I call it. Big dog of blood. Wait 15 seconds. They've done it. 1.5. Pretty much what I expected. Finally, we get a good reading. 1.5. Let's go. So, if you know your lactate threshold heart rate, that's great. But one of the careful things you need to do is not go too hard too early. Because it takes a while for the heart rate to get there. So it's much better to know the feel or a rough pace that you're going to be aiming for. Or if you've got a stride pod, you can use power. I'm deliberately not looking at power today because it's not something the younger Britons use, to my knowledge. So for most people, it'll be between 82 and 92% of heart rate max for this session. So for me, that's an upper limit of 178, but I won't get quite there. Should be lower than that for me. And it'll creep up at the end of each rep and then it'll drop in the recoveries. Did it say? 9.2. Did it actually? Yeah. Oh, that's wrong then. The problem was, I wiped it away with my hand, I think. We should put sweat in there. Trial run, trial run. Yeah. And also, the auto lap messed me up, so we stopped after 520 and got set. So it couldn't have gone more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the Ingebrigtsens never have to deal with this. <laughs> They got yet shouted in. That's it! Stop! I'm not good yet. <laughs> So 
so feeling really good. Feeling quite smooth, comfortable. Lactate reading say otherwise, but I'm feeling good. So the rep's been coming in at about 520 per mile, which is about 320 per K, um, which is exactly where I wanted them. That's five done. Uh, five done, one more to go. Feeling good. It's not a hugely taxing session, so you can get carried away. But if you stay disciplined, well, you have to stay disciplined, you've got another session later, so yeah, it's important just to control the effort. One six minute left, about 5.20 to 5.15, job done. Job done. Five times six minutes. Have a look at the stats in a bit. Do my lactate now, get my breath back, cool down, back to the house, recover. Enjoy that? Yeah, it's good. Thank you for filming. You're welcome. What he doesn't know is that I quite enjoyed uh, filming my own private little uh, Henrik. <laughs> So just coming towards the end of my cool down, that'll be another two miles. So it'll be about 10 miles in total, I think, with a warm up, uh, which is 16 kilometers. And should be similar again tonight. Tonight, the volume of the session, it's 10 times three minutes. So again, it's 30 minutes of work, just a few more recoveries, and you do it a bit quicker. So that should come to about 16K. 10 miles as well, so a big 20 mile day. And the Ingebrigtsens do this sort of day twice a week, and then a hill session on the Saturday, which gives them like 25% of their weekly volume of about 100 miles, 160K, is this anaerobic threshold type work, which is a huge proportion of work at that volume, which is why you make sure they control it all so they don't go into any overtraining. So it's time to do the evening session, session two of the day. Um, I've had a short nap earlier to try and refresh, but um, unlike the Ingebrigtsens, I couldn't just lie around and relax and recover all day, which is crucial as a pro athlete. Um, but for me, I've just got to get on with some work, but I did get a nap in, so I tried to copy what they would do the best I can. The session now is 10 times three minutes. Again, I need to keep it below threshold, um, but I can go a bit quicker on this one because I've got a minute between each three minutes. So that lowers your heart rate and gets you recovered slightly before you start the next rep. I'm doing it on the treadmill. The Ingebrigtsens use the treadmill a lot for their sessions and for some of their easy runs. Uh, in Norway, sometimes the conditions can be poor, so the treadmill is absolutely crucial for them. For me, I love using the treadmill as well. For this session, it's really good. You do your three minutes, you jump on the side, you recover, you go again. Treadmill has been really handy for me actually because in the UK, we've got lockdown at the moment, which allows us to go out and exercise once a day. So I wouldn't be allowed to go out on another run anyway. So this is a great tool for me to get this session done. To emphasize how fast the Ingebrigtsens are, their threshold pace is faster than my treadmill goes. So their threshold is in and around 21 kilometers an hour. The maximum speed my treadmill goes is 20 kilometers an hour. So it's insane, it's crazy. Uh, for me, I think even that 20 kilometers an hour isn't quite 20 kilometers an hour. So I'll do it by heart rate and effort again. Um, so I'll be putting the pace at 20 kilometers an hour, but that doesn't mean it's 450 a mile, three minutes a kilometer. It will be a little bit slower than that because obviously my threshold isn't as fast as that. But if it's too quick, I'll slow it down. So it's time to get rolling. 10 times three minutes on the treadmill. Let's get this done. Start with a warm up, get straight into it and uh, try and get this done so I can go and have some dinner and recover and feel good that I've done training like an Ingebrigtsen. So I just finished my 10 minutes warm up. Uh, feeling good, feeling smooth. Um, not feeling too bad after this morning session. So I've probably got the intensity right because I don't feel stiff or sore. Just feel quite uh, quite loose actually. So gonna start the camera and uh, get this session done. 
hopefully gauge the heart rate and intensity. I'm not going to use the lactate monitor again because the readings were so bizarre earlier that uh, I don't see much point. And I know where my threshold is, so if I go over it, then it's my own fault. Uh, I know how it feels as well, so I'll, um, I'll regret it if I do. Anyway, let's get cracking. Right, that's two done. Now I'm sweating. Um, it's not hard. My heart rate's hitting up high at the moment of 174. So four beats less than it was hitting earlier. So we'll see if it creeps up as we continue. I don't know if you can hear me, the treadmill's whizzing along. Three done. Heart rate's dropping really quickly, 172 already. It's good, it's good. Um, good thing about treadmill is you know you can get the session done and you stay mentally strong. <laughs> In my head I'm like, well, just keep on keep on moving, don't step off until you're meant to. Uh, which is fine in this session because it's quite comfortable. But some sessions when I'm all out on the treadmill, it can get tough, but if you get mentally strong, you can achieve more than you thought. Six done. It's not hard, but it's not comfortable. It's that in between, so that's what you're looking for, really. Five seconds. seconds of the recovery really happy it's a tough day it's a lot of running but like you can see how the younger Britons get very fit doing this twice a week plus a hill session on the long run Ooh. it's a lot of running that's a lot faster running but it's controlled right ready to go in 15 And that's 10 times three minutes in the bank. If you don't already follow my channel, it'd be great if you subscribe because I am lining up in the Wrexham Elite Marathon in April and I'm going for a big marathon PB. And it'd be awesome if you followed along the journey of my training. That's not the end of the video. I just want to put that in now because no one subscribes and you put it at the end. So if you put it in the middle, or near the end, maybe you can press the subscribe button and share it with your friends. Because I got sweaty I got for you. Ugh, minging. The hardest bit of the sort of session now is the cool down. I hate cool downs. I love them when you're running in a group just chatting, but when you're on your own on the treadmill doing 10 minutes slow after two sessions in the day and you want your dinner, a cool down is not your friend. But it has to be done. So slow this thing down and get on with it. Ah, oh, happy with that session, got the cool down done. And look who came to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Harry. <laughs> <sighs> right, time for some dinner and then we'll analyze the data and all that sort of stuff later. Right then, to finish this video, let's talk a little bit about how the day went and how the younger Britons train. So I was really happy with how both sessions went. I felt like I gauged the intensity pretty well. Uh, the lactate readings were a disaster. And considering I've got a chemistry degree, I should be better at that sort of practical work, but I was always uh, pretty awful at labs. Um, but yeah, the actual sessions felt good. The heart rate was where I wanted them. And I was really pleased with the treadmill session to finish the day. Like I said before, my treadmill reads a bit fast, so I don't think that was 450 a mile. Um, 
but the really good thing is that Noble Pro, the treadmill I've got, I've got an update so I can increase the speed of my treadmill to 21 kilometers an hour. So that should give me a bit more room to go a little bit faster as I get a bit fitter. With regards to the Ingebrigtsens, I think it's clear that they do a lot of work, but it's not that hard, the work they do. They just do a lot of it. So 25% of the week at that anaerobic threshold intensity, broken into four sessions over two days, is, is what I think is a clever way of training. Uh, you do recover pretty well between the sessions, and then you take your easy days really easy. Yurt was adamant when he was bringing up his kids not to do too much anaerobic work. Um, so he keeps it all at that threshold. He gets them really, really fit aerobically. Uh, and then he tops off with that anaerobic stuff when it's getting closer to track season. So they do this sort of training a lot of the year. And then as they get closer to the track races that they all excel in, he'll do a lot of track work and 300s and just your traditional track type of work. I put a summary week up earlier and that talks about the four threshold sessions. They also do a hill session on a Saturday, which is two times 10 times 200 meters up a hill. Uh, so basically 20 times up a hill. Um, I've never tried that one. Uh, I've done a lot of hill sessions my, myself and they're pretty tough. And then they cap the week off with a 20 kilometer long run, about 80 to 90 minutes. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty tough week. They average about 160 kilometers, 100 miles a week, and it gets them very, very fit, and they're all world beaters at the moment. Jakob won double gold in the Europeans, which has never been done before, and he was 17. So it definitely works, but you have to look through the history of their running to really understand how they got this fit. And they have progressed their volume over the years, they've been very cautious, and they've been consistent. Consistent hard work, patient work, for many years. What I'd love you guys to do is go into the description and I've put a few links to some research papers that have been done uh, that have included the Ingebrigtsens. There's one from 2012 which is based completely around Henrik and his training. There's a review paper which talks about the three Ingebrigtsen brothers and then there's some other papers that I've dropped in there which I think could be really interesting reading. Lots of the information I've included in this video have been from those papers. I've done some wider reading, I looked at other sources too, but it's great to see these research papers giving you such detailed information on their training. The sports scientist that's worked with the Ingebrigtsen brothers that all their careers is Life Inga Jelta, and many other papers are by him. So I thoroughly recommend you go over and read some of his stuff. So I hope you enjoyed my training like an Ingebrigtsen. It was a lot of fun to make. It was a good day and uh, I'm not saying that you should go out and do double threshold days. It's not even something that I'll be doing very regularly. But what I do think is some of the strategies in training that Yurt's used with his sons is really, really clever training. You could use these sessions on different days. And rather than doing all the hard VO2 max, really hard intervals, do this controlled threshold work and really focus on your threshold. There's less chance of injury. You can really improve your threshold. It responds really well to this sort of training. So maybe that's something to think about. I know that VO2 max work can really help you peak, but maybe that's exactly what you need to do with it. Peak with it rather than do it all year round. Anyway, I would love you to like, subscribe, comment what you thought, comment if you do this sort of training, just get in the comments so we can have a discussion about the Ingebrigtsens and about this sort of training. And I'm looking forward to discussing it all with you there. If you did like this video, share it with your friends, come back, subscribe, press that notification bell, and I've got lots more exciting videos to come including my training block towards the Wrexham Elite Marathon. Thanks guys.